afternoon. We're going to do Chapter 15, Lecture A, uh, entitled, What is Freedom? Um, this won't be a super long lecture today, uh, but we're going to get through at least the introduction of it, and we'll talk about a few things here dealing with post-Civil War. Uh, focus questions for this chapter. We'll focus on what visions of freedom did the former slaves and slaveholders pursue in the post-war South? Uh, what were the competing uh, visions of reconstruction or views? What were the social and political effects of radical reconstruction in the South? And what were the main factors in the North and South for abandonment of reconstruction? Okay, so the meeting of freedom. Congressman A. James Garfield asked, um, what is freedom? During Reconstruction, freedom became a uh, terrain of conflict and substance uh, open to different and often contradictory, contradictory interpretations, just like anything you have. First off, uh, for blacks, it was escape from sla slavery. First and foremost, the single easiest definition for uh, blacks or African Americans after the Civil War is the escape of slavery and freedom. Henry Adams, an emancipated slave, stated, "If it cannot do like a white man, I am. If I cannot do like a white man, um, I'm not free." But the first thing was they are free from bondage. Uh, secondly, though, are they going to be truly free uh, like a white men? Families and freedom, freedom from white supervision. They could finally be uh, on their own. Um, they won't have to be constantly be looked out by white overseers. Free black schools, churches, and et cetera were expanded. Uh, tried to locate lo uh, Lovelands, stabilize the family, and really start to solidify uh, the family structure. Church and school. Blacks abandoned white-controlled religious institutions, and most of them started their own. Blacks flocked to the schools established by Northern Missionary Services. First black colleges as well will start to pop up. So you're going to see this meaning of freedom is now they are free. They have opportunities to move about um, and really fix some of the things that had went awry. Meaning of freedom, too. A political freedom, freedom. Anything less than full citizenship would be considered a failure. Uh, to demonstrate their patriotism, blacks throughout the South organized 4th of July celebrations. White Southerners would, sh would shut themselves within doors for obvious reasons here because they, they were not excited about that. But the point of this is, is... Blacks now are going to start to want to exercise uh, their, their, their liberty and being able to uh, vote and so forth uh, once the 15th Amendment's passed. Land, labor, and freedom. Freedom was linked to land ownership. Some parts of the South, blacks in 1865 seized property and insisted it belonged to them. A white freedom was a birthright to be defended. Uh, black freedom was an open-ended process and transformation. So you're going to start to see... Uh, African Americans start to pursue, try to acquire land and start to really model themselves after what had been successful uh, for whites in this country. Masters without slaves. White Southerners reacted with dismay at the loss of the war. Nearly 260,000 men died from the Confederacy, more than one-fifth of the South's adult male population. The planter farms not only lost their slaves, but their life savings. Most of them will be drained. Journalist Sidney Andrews stated in 1865, the whites seemed very unable or unable to comprehend that the freedom of the Negro means the same thing as freedom for them. And you think about it, society they had built, uh, there's this whole thing around uh, a feudalistic notion and the idea that uh, blacks are subject and at the low that now they could be equal just would not be comprehend comprehendable. The medium of uh, freedom three, uh, the free labor vision. The victorious Republican North tried to implement its own vision of freedom. Northern capital and its migrants were, were, would energize the economy in the South. The Freedom Bureau, Freedmen's Bureau created to establish a working free labor system in the South and help uh, Southern, uh, free blacks. And then planters wanted to establish a labor system as close to slavery as possible. So as the North looks to rebuild the South, uh, the so Southerners are going to be like, okay, let's build the labor system as close as we can get to slavery. And they will honestly, sadly, be successful to that. And we'll talk about that more later. The Freedmen's Bureau... O.O. Howard was the director of the Freedmen's Bureau, cap comparable to the New Deal in scope and kind of the intent. Uh, supposed to establish schools, provide aid to the poor, settle disputes between whites and blacks, uh, and secure former slaves and white unionists equal uh, treatment before the courts in the South. It will last about five years from 1865 to 1870. Uh, by 1869, nearly 3,000 schools serving more than 150,000 were created. And that in itself, it was successful. Also around several hospitals established in the war provided care and drugs to blacks and whites alike. So the Freedmen's Bureau's intent, um, pretty good. It, the idea here is to kind of 
uh, help blacks get on their feet, per se, and even some uh, whites. Meaning of Freedom 4, uh, but the failure of land reform. One provision gave authority to buy and abandon and confuse land into 40-acre uh, plots for rental and eventual sale to former slaves. President Johnson ordinarily all land in federal hands be returned to its former slaves. Epic failure and made former slaves dependent on former masters. In this one thing, this is where you're going to have the return to almost slave-like conditions. Uh, all the land that was seized by the federal government will be returned back to former slave owners. Thus, all the land will go back to the original owners. Slaves will thus not be able to buy the land. Thus, they're going to have to practice what's called sharecropping. Crops divided, uh, compromised between former slaves and planters over the years became more and more oppressive and kept blacks from much social mobility. Basically, blacks come farm segments of land. It's like cash rent almost to some degree, but much more harsh because the southerners are going to take it to the, the blacks. The white farmer. The collapse of the omen farmer found himself more in debt. Uh, crop uh, linen system credit extended by merchants to tenants based on their future crops. They're obviously going to keep getting further and further in debt. Even as the rural south stagnated economically, southern cities experienced remarkable growth after the Civil War. So you're going to see the urbanization of the south for the first time post-Civil War. Aftermath of slavery, the United States was not only society to confront the problem of transition from slavery to freedom, uh, but we all obviously have a huge... Uh, event going on here to do this. Some stereotypes of blacks were across the world were uh, the same stereotypes across the world with blacks was it wasn't just an American thing, but there was a lot of stereotyping that you would think of. Plantations either fell to pieces or continued to operate with a new labor force. Only in the United States did slaves two years after the slavery given the right to vote, which is crazy radically different than any other country. They didn't even go that step far around the world. So we though we may have lagged behind other countries like Great Britain of freeing the, the slaves we were a step ahead in giving them voting rights. The struggle, reconstruction between Congress and President Andrew Johnson. The problem with Andrew Johnson, he's not Lincoln. He doesn't have the charisma. He's a Southerner. He's a Democrat. He doesn't get work well with the Republican-controlled Congress. The making of Radical Reconstruction 1. Andrew Johnson, born into poverty, remained in the Union, though his state left uh, the Union. He was a racist, hated, bloated, corruption, aristocracy. So basically, he was a racist, and the one of the biggest things he remained in the Union was because he was a Unionist um, and honestly he hated the aristocracy that had been created in the South, the plantation system. Uh, so he did not like being uh, basically the aristocrats of the South. Lack Lincoln's political skill, stubborn, intolerant of criticism, and unable to compromise. Um, thus, the failure of presidential reconstruction. In May of 65, he outlined his plan for reuniting the nation. Uh, President's reconstruction will last for two years from 1865 to 1867, and it's a failure. Offered a pardon to nearly all white Southerners who took an oath of allegiance back to the Union. Excluded Confederate leaders and wealthy plantation whose property had been valued at more than 20000 Most of the exp this expanded soon rejected individual pardons and appointed governors who were tasked to call state convention special established loyal governments in the South. The actions of Southern governors turned the Republican North against the President. That because the reality here, there's not a, mu a lot of harshness towards the South, and it's really given the South a lot of ability to really dictate uh, re rehabilita rehabilitation back in the Union, which is going to really uh, put issues on uh, black slaves, former black slaves. Thus, you're going to have the rise of the black codes. Aroused most opposition to Johnson, black codes laws passed by the new Southern governments that attempted to regulate the lives of former slaves. Uh, and here's a picture of Johnson on the slide you follow along, Ron. Uh, reconstruction, the uh, making of radical reconstruction too, uh, declared that those who failed to sign yearly labor contracts would be arrested and hired out to white landowners. Most of the Union Army swiftly were demobilized. Uh, most policy hate was the ability of the South's political leaders to accept the reality of emancipation as evidenced by the Black Codes. Basically, the South's not going to be able to comprehend that the slaves are no longer slaves, and thus a lot of the radical parts of Reconstruction are going to deal with uh, getting them to understand that. Radical Republicans, in December of 65, Johnson announced the, uh, what was a loyal government's function all over southern states. The nation had been reunited. Radical Republicans called for new governments without rebels and guaranteeing the right to vote for the blacks. Most prominent radicals in Congress were Charles Sumner and Thaddeus uh, Stevens. Thus, you're going to have the origins of the civil rights, the making of Radical Reconstruction Three. Most Republicans were moderates, not radicals, majority in Congress without the South being re represented. Uh, refused to seat Southerners recently elected but allowed Southern governments to remain. Civil Rights Bill of 1866 that defined all persons born in the United States as citizens and spelled out rights that they were enjoyed without regard to race. It also extended the Freedmen's Bureau. 
Johnson vetoed both laws. Uh, Freedmen's Bureau override failed by a single vote in Congress, though extended later on. The Civil Rights Bill became the first major law in history to be passed over a presidential veto. Um, and it's going to lead to uh, even more, the 14th Amendment, which defined what a person was. Congress now went on its own plan of reconstruction. Uh, the 14th declared the principle of citizenship to all people born in the United States um, and empowered the federal government to protect the rights of all Americans. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Uh, and as we get into past the 14th Amendment and looking at Reconstruction, you're going to see now the really intense battle uh, between Johnson and Congress. And really bringing the Union is not going to be an easy process, uh, but honestly what's going to happen is though the battles will be fought early on politically, uh, by the 1870s, mid-1870s, other things are going to start to surpass and be more important uh, to Congress, and essentially Reconstruction will be dropped altogether. And that's where we'll get and finish on our next lesson.